Hey y'all, thanks for coming out and seeing some poetry. I'm going to be sharing four short ones. They are all brand new and they're all about my Palestinian family and my people. So this first one is called the American Dream and all you need to know is that there used to be a pathway to citizenship by serving for four years in the military and that's how my Palestinian grandfather got his American citizenship. The American Dream. My grandfather didn't want to leave the old country, not for four years in the army and not for more beyond. He didn't want to wear Uncle Sam's uniform in Korea, but this was the price for the promise of America. Maybe his neighbors called him a sellout, said he was abandoning the homeland, giving up on the promise of Palestine. Maybe they appealed to his sense of ethics because it's pretty messed up when you think about it. The Koreans were defending their own homeland, and his citizenship is not their problem to solve. To escape exile, he had to exile himself. To escape one war, he had to fight in someone else's. Somewhere, God is laughing while we the people scream. This is the irony of imperialism. This is the American dream. So this next one, I don't know if this is as much of a thing here, but uh, in the South where I grew up, I grew up in rural Alabama, and when you have paid off your house, it's common to get like an eagle, like decor to put over the door as like a sign of like, I own this. So you'll see that come up in this next one called the metaphor of America. In 1976, my grandparents got a house that couldn't be taken away an eagle over the door told the neighbors, this is ours, all ours. Two stories, two fridges, two fig trees, and a two-car garage. An extra of everything, in case one was stolen by settlers, taken by soldiers. An old habit forged in an even older country. In America's bicentennial, my immigrant grandparents owned a house in new freedom, like fireworks and apple pie, free like a bird. But the couch was covered in plastic and crinkled when we sat. The carpet got mussed when we deigned to cross the room. So we didn't sit here and didn't walk there. We admired, but did not touch. It was enough for them to have what they wanted. In America, birds peck the apples heaving upon the trees and fireworks frighten the bird's heart so it start, stops beating. <laughs> This is the metaphor of America, to know freedom, but never freedom from the fear of losing everything you've got. This next one will be familiar to all my 90s kids who grew up watching Disney movies. And for this one, all you need to know is that Sido and Teta are the Arabic words for grandfather and grandmother. This one is called Dreaming of a Whole New World. Before I knew the flower, she was a name, Jasmine from the Disney movie Aladdin. A VHS I watched so many times, the tape wore thin from Rewind, and I tore through Cito and Teta's house asking for lamps, exasperated when they pointed to electric bulbs. I found the gravy boat in the back kitchen cabinet and rubbed my hands raw on its ceramic surface. Palms red with hoping for a genie to grant wishes for kittens because I wasn't a horse girl. Teta asked, what you are doing with him? And there had to be a blue gin inside. Why else hide the vessel? Kittens, a magic carpet since my Barbie Jeep didn't allow me to leave the yard and to be a princess, my three wishes. Teta tittered, when you are older, I take you to the old country and you can have any man you want. Green eyes, fair skin, American citizenship. You have your pick, Habibti. Sure, you can be princess. But with the lamp, I could have my enchantment, my shining, shimmering, splendid, without a man. With prayer and grandchildren, Teta could have her right of return before she died outside the homeland. We both believed in the impossible, the glittering hope that makes dreamers of Palestinians all.
This last one is called We Love What We Long For, and it is an homage to the Gazan poet Mosab Abu Toha, who wrote We Love What We Have. And it has an epigraph in the beginning, so I'll share that. This is from Mosab's poem. What's here is something that we are still building. It's something we cannot yet see because we are a part of it. So this is We Love What We Long For. Palestinians are siblings to longing and cousins to hope. I carry the memories of my Sido and Teta in my blood and bones. I touch the tetris of a thobe against my skin, though I've never worn it. I feel Sido's worry beads in my pocket, though I've never carried them. I feel the Ramallah desert sun on my flesh, though I've never basked in it. I smell the smoky scent of red poppies, though I've never picked a bouquet. I sense the Oud's plucked notes to the city, though I've never heard a chord. I feel the cool metal key to my grandparents' stone house, raised before I was born. I taste oil mashed from the family olive trees, though I've never fed upon their nectar. I savor ripe homeland figs, though I've never tongued the toothsome fruit. The hope for a free Palestine makes daydreamers and time travelers of us all. I yearn for what I fear I'll never have. I long for the simplest of pleasures. I dream of a bare spot among the poppies, the sun on my face, figs on my tongue, a picnic on the Jordan River bank, and a key in my purse to a home I can return to. Thank you all so much, and free Palestine.